Okay, it's about time I get to this thing. It's the big German CRT. Remember that I teased uh, this big tube um, during my little German CRT video from a couple weeks back or whenever. Finally got some free time, so I figured I'd better get this done. In any case, yes, it is a big CRT. Well, it's kind of a weirdly proportioned one anyway. It's maybe about four inches. Kind of looks like probably P1, judging from the color of the screen. Gigantic base. And yes, a lot of, well, they're not really pins, they're sort of just contacts. Well, <laughs> the obvious thing is, it is a dual CRT. Dual beam CRT. Clearly, you can see the two electron gun assemblies in there. And uh, a little bit of an angle, which is kind of interesting, actually. Um, you can barely see the deflection plates. Uh, I don't know if you can eh, kind of barely see them in there. Um, I don't know if this is a DAG coating for high voltage. It might be. I don't know. I actually don't have a whole lot of data on this. This is, and you can see from the, well, maybe you can't. It's really hard to see. An AEG HR2 slash 100 slash 1.5A. It's etched in the glass there. Hard to see. I don't have much in the way of real data on this. I know it takes a 4-volt filament and 1,500 volts uh, for the final voltage, the acceleration voltage, if you will. I don't know the pinout. Um, I might be able to get that online. I think, I think there may be some data online. Anyway, uh, this particular tube is World War II German, AEG being, of course, one of their electronics and electrical equipment manufacturers back then. And it was used in a radar set called the Würzburg. The Würzburg was a uh, relatively well-known and pretty successful radar in World War II Germany. It was used for what is called gunlang, that is, pointing anti-aircraft uh, guns, obviously to shoot down aircraft. And this is one of the reasons why it has two gun, two electron guns there. Back then, the radars were, well, let's face it, they were sloppy. They weren't very good. And if you're aiming a gun, especially one that wants to hit something potentially miles away up in the air, you need to be very precise. One of the tricks they used was called lobe switching. Now, with the C model of the Würzburg, they use this thing called lobe switching, and basically what that means is the antenna is arranged to actually shoot out two beams, or relative, receive two beams. You can do it either way. But these two beams are off-center a little bit, one to the left a little bit, one to the right a little bit. Not by much, just a few degrees. And you would switch the machinery, the electronics, which switch between the beams, or the lobes, rather. And using uh, the good old human, human eyeball of the radar operator, he would be given the video data from these two beams. And by looking at the intensities, he could tell if he was on center or not. If he was getting a bit better return on, say... The left beam might show a better signal here than the right. Let's just say that, you know, for uh, um, example, let's say that's the left, that's the right. If the left was maybe a little be uh, better and the blip came out of the uh, under the screen was a little more intense than the right, well, he knew that maybe his antenna needed to be scooched over a little bit to the left. The idea is you wanted to get the two signals equal the two blips on the screen equal that would give that would mean that you are in the, the you're pointing your antenna 
right between the two lobes, you could get much, much better accuracy out of, out of this system. Now, the interesting thing is that this was not a specifically a German trick. Uh, the early World War II radars, many of them used this trick. What is interesting is the U.S. used regular old CRTs to do this, like a 5CP1. Single gun, dead simple. And what they would do is, the circuitry would do in the U.S. radars would be, it would just, every other line, it would switch off. It would do a scan that might show the left lobe, and then the next scan would be the right lobe, and you obviously do this fast enough. On the screen, it look, it all blurs together, and the good old human eyeball just sees it as... You know, one beam, essentially, uh, being split into two. Now, for some reason, the Germans here had to come up with this <laughs> fantastically expensive solution and have a dual-gun CRT. Apparently, they wanted to show both beams at once. I'm not entirely certain, but if you look at that thing, my God, that thing must have been costly to make. And every every one of these radars, and uh, there there were, I don't know, maybe a thousand Wurzburg radars. They made a lot of them. Uh, and then spares, of course, these tubes. They must have made a lot of these tubes at one point. And look at that. They're, they're just fantastic. See if we can get, a, see if we can get a, a good focus there. <laughs> look, you even have uh, to help the, presumably they were um, women putting these tubes together. You can see there, there are actually numbers on the wires to get things right. So when they're wiring everything up to the base, because, God, this thing has a lot of pins. Um, pre I don't know if I'm going to ever find a socket for this. Must have been a big thing that clamped over. I'll try. If I ever get data, maybe I'll try shooting this thing up. It looks like it still has a pretty good getter. Don't really see any in the way of burns on the screen, although there's a little bit of something there. I don't know if that's... Oh, it's just a little bit of schmutz there. It's gone. Uh, it would be neat to get this thing running. I'll have to dig up some data. Maybe uh, maybe that radio museum site has it. Be neat to get this thing running. And also that little uh, AEG tube that I showed in previous videos. Anyway, well, there you go. Kind of a neat, early, early dual beam CRT. I'm... Well, I'm trying to think of any any dual beam CRTs that came out before this. This would have been, what, 42, 43 maybe? Uh, I'm sure it was used all the way up to the end of the war. Um, you know, certainly in the 50s, multi-gun CRTs became very common, especially, obviously, with color TV. But this is about the earliest dual gun CRT I can think of. I'm sure there probably was something earlier. But uh, maybe it wasn't, uh, you know, maybe those were uh, lab prototypes or something like this. But this, this dual gun CRT was an actual real production item. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick look. I finally got around to doing this thing here. This neat HR2 slash 100 slash 1.5A dual beam CRT from AEG. If you like the video, leave a like. Maybe share it even. I don't know. Subscribe! I'm still trying to grow this channel. Time is freeing up, so I'll try and get a little little more done. In fact, maybe I'll even shoot another one today because my internet's acting up, so I can't do any online business. So uh, maybe I'll just shoot some videos and upload them tonight. All right. Bye-bye.